Chapter 14, Flora. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock. Report number 114. Testimony from randomly selected citizen, Mr. Hank Kars. It's almost impossible to know. We can do all the complex adaptive dynamic modeling we want, but the fact is, a market is like a quantum waveform. It only collapses to a buy or sell when the need is perceived. Raise it, but set thresholds that if it doesn't raise enough funds, it would automatically reset. In fact, why this city hasn't considered PID controllers, which is used in all the mechs for the city's markets, is beyond me. Flora used to spend much of her younger years at a library, using the free computers, researching anything and everything. Before she got her own laptop, she would spend her afternoons absorbing books, internet forums, and the ideas being shared across the city's internet. Luckily, local internet archive replicators had kept shards of data. All wasn't lost when the anomaly descended. She could still dream of Hong Kong cityscapes, the mountains of Patagonia, the coasts of South Africa, the volcanic islands of Iceland, and the beaches of Los Angeles. She would close her eyes and imagine she was there. Not just to feel what it would be like to experience a world that didn't exist anymore, but to perhaps, just maybe, find a clue as to what really happened. It was on one of those missions through the library that she met Palma. His parents often gave him extra material to research, and so he had to spend afternoons away from what he wanted to do, swimming in the man-made sky-level lakes of the penthouses. Today, to learn more about her competitors, Flora was in a different library, a collection of hollowed-out cars strung together in the gridlock. Each car was filled to the roof with books, Rows upon rows of cars, stretching along the streets. A makeshift canopy above them kept the books safe from sun damage. In the distance, the mid-levels loomed and would soon swallow this library. In a corner of the road library, the trunks of the cars contained desks for whomever would prefer to study amidst the ambient background noise of the city. This was where Flora preferred to sit with her laptop. It reminded her of the library in the skies above her that she used to frequent. One had large windows, and the other had none. It was late in the afternoon on a Sunday, empty. What was left was the smell of nervous student sweat that still clung to the plastic chairs and dust from the books in the surrounding cars. She examined her strategic notes. Darius Cantor, middle-aged man with a mohawk, worked his whole life as a gridlock mechanic, maintaining those who still had the funds to keep their cars in shape for an eventual exodus. He had some videos online showcasing his shop. In one video, he berated an employee. Seemed erratic and aggressive, perhaps even sneaky. Richter Allen, a slender, bald man that didn't seem like he had the athletic build to compete. He was a penthouse's architect, with his portfolio showing off sleek mansions. There were only a few news mentions, difficult to judge. Mickey Rue, the young woman with a wide smile, She was young, very androgynous. She worked as a creative in the mid-levels, did copywriting and other design work. She seemed happy. There were pictures of her apartment, an urban jungle full of plants and two cats. Buck Chassis, burly man, tattoos across both shoulders, working as a chef in a restaurant in the penthouses, used to work as a laborer in the vertical grow farms before becoming a chef. That's his secret, apparently knows good ingredients. Barely off the radar, except for a few news clippings of being nominated as a top chef a few years ago. He seemed content. Omo Nira, a muscled young woman, a technologist working at the public car market's office. Deep into cryptography, she has a blog that details some of the innovations she helped create. New signature schemes, new peer-to-peer network gossiping protocols. Her videos were quite informative. Flora stayed for a while on them, learning how some of the tech worked. Satello Emmer, son of Pren Emmer, cousin of Palma. Bald, young, and seemed like an asshole. His social media was full of videos of himself doing questionable stunts. Very hold my beer. Athletic and strong-willed, it seemed. Argent Winslow, lover of Armin, the hope runner that died at the edge of the city. Just searching her profiles made shivers run down Flora's spine. Brave woman. Very brave woman. 
used to work as an actress before falling off the map. Her social media picked up recently as she campaigned for the championship assembly to select her. There was an energy about her, a desire for something close to revenge. Cassidy Kim, a slim young woman, a dancer and personal trainer. Her website detailed her services. Primarily high-end for penthouses folks, it seemed. Some of the videos of her training were just endless views from some balcony high up in the city. She also seemed to have combined dancing with parkour, running across the mid-levels, twisting and dancing through it. It was beautiful. Big social media following. Lots of vibes. For Sunny Augustus, however, it was blank. The only information she discovered was the news of his selection. No social media, no clippings of a previous life, nothing. He was hiding something. No one is just missing or scrubbed from the web. When she searched for his daughter, Allie Augustus, nothing came up either. When Flora entered only their first names, nothing came up either. They were basically missing. As she kept fruitlessly searching, her typing became more furious. Eventually, a morsel appeared when she searched discussions on social media. Others were pondering the same. A user did a reverse image search and found a picture of Sunny and Allie a few years ago. When the picture appeared, a jolt of shock pulsed through her body. Allie Augustus looked like a younger Flora. Same haircut, same colors in her dress that Flora liked, green and gold. She studied the picture of the younger Sunny, and suddenly it came into view. He looked like her father. What is going on? The tension in Flora rose as the memory of her father became louder in her mind. Her hand came closer to the screen, lingering, hoping that she could touch him. She was too young to remember much about him, and she wished she could, every day. Disturbed by what emotions Sonny's picture had over her, she suddenly yanked away her hand and closed the browser. Who was he? Luckily, the official championship preparation proceedings would be the next day, giving her the opportunity to face the man that looked like her father. <laughs> 